Why would the Democrat put this video out of clearly drunk Kamala? They want her career over. Everyone's saying the same thing. She's drunk. Don't you ever let anybody take your power from you. You have the same power that you did before November 5th. And you have the same purpose that you did. What's next for Kamala Harris after her crushing defeat? A bizarre post-election video has emerged. And let's just say, it's raising eyebrows for all the wrong reasons. From slurred, inspirational cliches to outraged donors demanding answers about billions of mismanaged funds, this story is a train wreck of epic proportions. Today, we're diving into the chaotic aftermath of Harris's campaign, the backlash, the fallout, and the growing questions surrounding her political future. Buckle up, because this one's a wild ride. The 2024 election was nothing short of historic, but not in the way Kamala Harris hoped. After suffering a landslide defeat to Donald Trump, Harris's campaign is under fire for wasting over $1.5 billion on what donors are calling a disgraceful campaign. Stop sending me emails asking for money for the Harris Walls campaign. You spent a billion and a half dollars in a few months. I mean, did somebody steal it? I've never heard of anything like this. And you're in debt, like 20 million. We had a truth teller on this show, Lindy Lee, member of the DNC Finance Committee. Listen to her. We are going to keep losing if we don't have a financial accountability and some sort of very serious accounting of how exactly we spent a billion dollars. Millions were spent on, on celebrities, ice cream, private jets. 2.5 million were spent on Oprah. A lot of senior staff were summarily fired um, or, or told that they wouldn't be receiving any pay last week. And now we see basically massive layoffs. Never heard anything like it. John Morgan, mega donor. He has raised a lot of money for Democrats. Do you think people, do you think somebody stole the money? Well, maybe legally. All of a sudden, everybody's got the keys to the candy store. Ad buyers, talent, consultants. There's a hundred days to do it. And the money started pouring in, pouring in. Remember this, Chris, it wasn't pouring in for Harris. It was pouring in against Trump. Everybody that was voting and supporting Harris was really voting against Trump. And everybody that was voting for Trump was voting for Trump. They were running ads in Florida, where I live, nonstop. And I'm like, why? And a lot of people got rich on the back of donors trying to stop Trump. She's having a call with donors this week. They tell me about her political future. I don't think she has a political future. Obama did not want her. Obama did not endorse her for five days. Pelosi did not want her. Why Here's did the Biden problem. pick her? I think it was to say F you to Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama and every representative that was pushing him out. And just when you thought the drama couldn't get worse, Harris herself reappeared with a video message that has the internet in stitches, and not in a good way. The Democratic National Committee released a video featuring Kamala Harris, addressing her supporters for the first time since her defeat. Clad in casual attire, Harris urged her followers, don't you ever let anybody take your power from you. She continued with an odd mix of motivational jargon, saying, you have the same power, the same purpose, the same ability to engage, but here's the thing, the internet wasn't inspired. Social media exploded with reactions, comparing Harris's speech to a drunk girl hyping me up in the bathroom. One commentator joked, I'm calling for an investigation into Kamala Harris for Russia collusion. She's consumed all of their vodka. And the critiques didn't stop there. Another viral tweet summarized what many have been saying for months. Kamala talks, but she says nothing at all. She says it all the time. You would think her speech writers would say, Madam, you've said that too many times. Nobody knows what the F you're talking about. But she keeps saying it over and over in SOT 16, listen for yourself. Amazing. I have to remind you, don't you ever let anybody take your power from you. You have the same power 
that you did before November 5th. And you have the same purpose that you did. And you have the same ability to engage and inspire. That's the drunk so don't power. ever let anybody or any circumstance take your power from you. And you gave all that you could to support our campaign. Look at this, we raised an historic $1.4 billion, almost $1.5 billion. You You're in debt. You raised a historic $1.4 billion. You spent all that money on Oprah. How is that a, how is that a win? You spent it on giving it, you gave that money to Al Sharpton. You gave that money to multi-millionaire actors and actresses, washed up singers, Lizzo. You paid for Lizzo's private jet. You paid $2.5 million to Oprah, who's a billionaire. So you stole money. You, you stole money from little grannies in Minnesota that have been psyoped into thinking Trump's Hitler. They gave you their last $10 in their bank account. And then you forked all that over to Oprah. The whole thing, your entire campaign was a Ponzi scheme. You knocked on doors. You called friends. You, 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 you called in favors. You said, hey, you know, I showed up at your softball game. Now I need you to show up at the campaign office. <laughs> she's dr she's blackout. She's slurring. She's drunk. We've watched, sadly, hundreds of hours of Kamala Harris speeches. This is the worst I've ever seen. You, Look, you, she can't even open her eyes. You don't see the white, you see the whites of, you see the whites of her eyes? You can't even see the white, you can't even see inside of her eyes. Put the time, eye. it was personal for you. And I am thankful because I know your character is such that you're not gonna get knocked down and you're in this fight and you're in it for all the right reasons the video didn't just feature harris her running mate tim walls also made his first post-election appearance lamenting their loss he called the results disappointing and added it's a bit scary but now more than ever we need the light to shine through but instead of reassurance his vague remarks fueled more criticism. One viewer snapped, Tim Walls thinks it's scary that voters rejected him? Get used to it. We'll reject you again in 2026. In the weeks since her defeat, Harris has been largely MIA. When reporters pressed the White House for answers, the press secretary stated, the vice president is spending time with her family in Hawaii. Critics weren't impressed. One journalist quipped, while DNC staffers wonder where their paychecks are, Harris is sipping Mai Tais in paradise. Now, let's get to the heart of the scandal. The money. Harris's campaign raised over $1.5 billion a historic haul. But where did it all go? Here's what we know. $2.5 million went to Oprah Winfrey for a single endorsement. $900,000 was spent on plastering Harris's face on a giant sphere in Las Vegas. Six-figure sums were funneled into podcast studios for projects that never materialized. And yet, despite this extravagant spending, some campaign staff reportedly weren't paid for weeks. Furious donors are now demanding accountability. Democratic mega-donor John Morgan didn't hold back, calling the financial decisions Mad Max-level chaos. He added, if you can't run a campaign, you can't run America. This disaster isn't just a Harris problem. It's a Democratic Party problem. Nancy Pelosi reportedly warned early on that Harris wasn't ready for prime time, while Barack Obama waited days to endorse her candidacy. Insiders say Harris was never the party's first choice. But the campaign forged ahead, despite glaring red flags. Meanwhile, Republicans are seizing the moment. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis quipped, This is what happens when you prioritize celebrity endorsements over real strategy. As for Harris, her future looks uncertain. Sources claim she's holding private donor calls to discuss her next steps. But many believe her political career is over. One donor summed it up. This kind of financial disaster follows you forever. Even within her party, Harris is seen as a liability. Running mate Tim Walls has also come under fire with some calling him the most forgettable VP pick in history. This isn't just about one campaign. It's a warning for the entire Democratic Party. The Harris-Waltz campaign exposed deep flaws in how elections are funded and managed. Without reforms, insiders fear the party could face more humiliating losses in the future. At the core of this fiasco is a simple lesson. Trust is everything.
Voters didn't trust Harris. Donors feel betrayed, and even party leaders are questioning their judgment. So, what happens now? Can the Democrats rebuild, or is this the start of a larger unraveling? What do you think? Is this the end of Harris's political career, or can she bounce back? Let us know in the comments.